relationships, sex, fashion with Dr. Lori Batito. Hear the show live weeknights 10 to 11 on CJAD 800. Welcome to Passion, a show about love, sex, and relationships tonight on the program. A very special guest with us. We've had her here before. She's known as Dr. Love, or her name is Dr. Jamie Turndorf. She is the author of Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, Dr. Love's 10 Simple Steps to Cooling Conflict and Rekindling your relationship. This is something I talked about earlier in uh, on Barry's show this morning or this afternoon rather where we talked about how to, you know, conflict resolution, what are some of the things you shouldn't be doing, you shouldn't say and should was a big word. So we will talk uh, we're talking to Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Welcome back, Dr. Jamie. Hi, I'm so excited to be back with you. I'm so glad. Now we get to talk about your other book. Okay. <laughs> we can still, you know, people can still find out about the other. And I, by the way, after you were on, I got a lot of requests back saying, how do I get in touch with her? So oh, it was successful. So nice. Yeah, it was nice. So now we're talking about communication. To me, this is really something that is huge because as a therapist, of course, I do this every day, right? Work with issues with communication in couples. You say, or I should ask you, what is the number one cause that you feel of marital conflict or relationship conflict? What's the number one cause of divorce, if I can say that? Well, believe it or not, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye presents the number one fight pattern that has divorce and domestic violence written all over it. And it's called husband withdrawal. And I'm not talking about a natural form of birth control here. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about (laughs) the fight pattern in which the woman rags on the guy and nags him and complains, and he withdraws from her emotionally, physically, verbally. And this pattern, which is called the demand withdrawal, negative escalation cycle is the number one most common fight pattern in among couples and the number one cause of divorce and domestic violence and that's what kiss your fights goodbye is all about i show you how to break the cycle what causes it and how to break it so why, why this difference why is it it's the women who are the ones blamed for the nagging and the pushing and the Mm -hmm. men who withdraw i'm glad you asked that question now you have to read the book for the answer. No, here we go. <laughs> you have so, to give us a little glimpse, yeah, though, okay? You, you, know the, you know that old commercial? Read the book. That's so, right. Men's biology is hardwired to be hyperreactive to stress and danger. This dates back to caveman times when men were hunters, and they needed to react with lightning speed to flee or to fight mm-hmm. dangerous prey. Now, modern danger is no longer the ferocious tiger. It's the pissed-off wife or girlfriend. Hmm, but the, but, but she, the body responds the same way. Right. When, the, right. when she comes at him, his body sees danger, and since he doesn't want to physically fight her, he flees instead. And there are three ways that all men flee, verbally, psychically, and physically. Now, not understanding that the fleeing is caused by a biochemical imbalance, A woman thinks, he doesn't care about me. She becomes hurt and angry, and then she turns up the heat, and her emotional intensity triggers more autonomic nervous system arousal or withdrawal reactions because ANS arousal triggers the fight-flight response, more fleeing, more hurt, more anger, and this is the vicious cycle that leads to divorce and violence. And as I said, husband withdrawal is the number one cause of divorce and violence. Now, the way we break the cycle is to cool down the climate. And if you remember, I said it's heated fighting that triggers this biochemical imbalance. Well, it turns out that cooling the climate down literally turns off the fight-flight response. And what's so amazing is once guys' chemistry is calmed down, they actually want to stick around and resolve conflicts. And that's easy to achieve using the step-by-step conflict resolution plan I share in the second part of Kiss Your Fights Goodbye. But the first part is how to cool the climate down. And I have several cool-down steps. Okay. Well, well let's talk about that. Uh, All right. Mm-hmm. Well, the first way to cool the climate down is to identify and eliminate your fight traps. These are those open and secret warfare tactics. Open warfare, the direct 
slams, you know, the name calling, the right. character assassination, the put downs, the screaming, the yelling. The secret warfare is more subtle, but it heats the climate all the same. Whining, nagging, complaining, guilt tripping, right? Mm-hmm. So, and the, is that the passive aggressive too? Or? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. in the mix too. But it, the point to remember is whether you're slamming somebody directly using open warfare fight traps or you're using secret warfare, they all heat the climate, cause more chemical imbalance in a man, more fighting, more withdrawal. And, you know, the most important thing that people need to realize is that while it may feel good to get your rocks off, on the moment, in the moment, on the rocks is where your relationship is going to end up if you don't ditch the fight traps. Because whatever we say and do, boomerangs back on you, Mm -hmm. right? But it sounds like... And I'm, I don't know if other listeners are hearing this, but almost like it's her doing that if she yeah, wouldn't I nag, he wouldn't do this, and then it's everything sort of would be good dance. in the world. Okay, it's a dance because women tend to be the relationship overseers and maintainers. We tend to be the ones who notice problems first and bring it to the guy's attention. So what I'm saying is, whoever brings the subject to, up has to do it in a way that's not going to heat the climate. Mm -hmm. I don't care who brings the subject up. Just launch the conversation correctly. Keep it cool. So it's it's in the way it's done. It's in the way it's done. Because the thing is, I'm not saying that we don't bring up things, but if what so many women are socialized to do, which does not help us, is we're very emotionally expressive. Right. But this intensity and heat sets off the biochemical imbalance. So you just cool it down. You don't bring all this raw, raw emotion to the partner. You're going to get a much better response because he's going to stay cool and he's not going to go into ANS arousal and we're not going to set the fight-flight response. So basically, off. if he wants to with, if he's needing to withdraw, you're not chasing him down, right? That's the not thing the is, thing to do, right? If you're cool, he won't need to withdraw. Right. He, you won't even be setting off the withdrawal response at all. But what if you've been trying, like, you know, I'm seeing couples who there's a lot of conflict and one partner is saying he's not listening to my needs. I need my needs met. And, okay. you know, this so is happening. So a lot happening. of times, what, you know, it's a dance. Because when you're nagging at the guy and you're ragging on him, he doesn't want to meet your needs. Nobody wants to feed somebody who's giving him a hard time, mm-hmm. right? So... Most women are not very, very good at directly communicating their needs, and instead they nag and they complain over what they're not getting. I mean, if women are honest, they will realize we're not socialized to be assertive and just say, this is what I would like. But you know? even when we are, sometimes women will, will say, I'm still not heard. Is, are sometimes we saying that's it differently? The case. Mm-hmm. So then all we can do is kill him and bury him in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's going to work, Dr. Love. <laughs> that's not going to bring the love back. No, I'm, no. I'm talking so with the thing the, is, <laughs> We'll just take thing, a, a short you know, break. When couples have been in conflict for a very, very long time, guys are so shut down. <laughs> they don't want to give you ice in winter. So the yeah. way we, the way we can get past this is, Besides cooling it down, there's another, another important way. Can we wait for that? We'll yeah, get to that to very, very, very important way. We're talking with Dr. Jamie Turndorf, Turndorf, author of Kiss Your Fights Goodbye. She's at AskDrLove.com, in case you're wondering. She's got a couple of books out. And uh, if you have questions about fighting, about communication, tonight's the night, 514-790-0800. You're listening to Passion right here on CJD. You're listening to Passion with Dr. Lori Petito, the podcast. Hear the show live weeknights 10 to 11 on CJAD 800. My guest tonight, Dr. Jamie Turndorf, author of Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, Dr. Love's 10 Simple Steps to Cooling Conflict and Rekindling Your Relationship, talking about fighting and or conflict resolution even and communication. We want to learn how to communicate better, especially with our partners. If you have questions for Dr. Turndorf, please give us a call, 514-790-0800, or feel free to text us at 514-800. So you were about to tell me the most imp- another really important thing. Okay, so, you know, you asked me the question, what's a woman do when a guy is unresponsive? Mm-hmm. So the thing is, very often it is surprising to discover that when we think the guy is unresponsive, 
he's actually in the fight-flight response. His biochemistry is out of whack, and he seems unresponsive because he's in this ANS arousal or fight-flight response. Is it really now, just that, or can he not just be an ass? And, no, and, and... it's really just that, and I'm going to give you an example. Well, first, let me tell you something, because this is so important for women to know. As I said before, since most men don't want to physically fight their partners, they flee instead. Now, the most obvious way that men flee uh, is the way that we know they physically flee. They leave the room, the yeah. house, they hide out in their workshop or their basement. That's obvious. Mm -hmm. But there are two other ways that men flee that are so subtle, and women don't realize that this fleeing is biochemically driven. So the second type of fleeing is called mental or psychic fleeing. Here, the mind takes a hike. The guy looks deaf, dumb, blind. He's got mm. a no hablo in place expression. He's drooling on his tie. He's physically present, but he's mentally gone. When you see this, he's unresponsive. He's not answering. He's closing his eyes. He's ignoring you. If you don't understand this is biochemically driven, you're going to take this personally, you're going to get hurt, you're going to get mad, you're going to think the guy doesn't even give a crap about mm -hmm. me, he doesn't even want to listen to what I'm saying, but he's actually in biochemical imbalance. And, I've, and I have proved this in my own studies. This is, we have all the proof that, you know, his blood pressure is up, his pulse rate is up, okay? Now, the third type of fleeing that a guy does is verbal fleeing. Here he's justifying, he's making excuses, right. he's defending himself, right. he's verbally escaping responsibility. And as I said, women don't know that these fleeing behaviors are caused by primitive biological programming. They think the guy is fleeing because he doesn't care enough to stick around and resolve the fight. They feel hurt and angry. And, Turn not, up more and, heat. and they and don't feel heard because they, they feel they're that they're escaping hurt. responsibility. You just exactly. said that. It's like you're so, not taking responsible, responsibility exactly. for your actions. So, what do what you do? What the woman doesn't realize is that she has a hand in triggering the chemical imbalance because they're hyper-reactive to heat. So we've got to cool it down. And I said before we took the break, there are three main ways that we cool the climate down. The first way is to identify and eliminate the fight traps. But there's a second way that we cool the climate down, and this way is – what I call training your brain to fight for you, not against you. Okay. Now, this is easier said than done because all of us fall into what I call the echo process, which is a negative cognitive distortion that causes us to unconsciously hear our parents talking when our partners speak. Mm. And obviously <laughs> relationship trouble erupts when we distort what we see and hear when we're hearing our parent talking to us when it's really <clears throat> not happening. So let me give you an example. Tuesday night, chicken night in a particular house. So on one particular Tuesday, the husband says, is tonight chicken night again already? Now she freaks on him and she says, what, you don't like my chicken? You can cook your, for yourself. <laughs> now he just meant he couldn't believe how fast time flies. Right. But she heard her critical parent telling her that her chicken recipes stink because her mm. dad always put her down. So to break the echo process, I show you how to use my technique, training your brain to fight for you, not against you. So step one, you're going to hold your horses. And in this case, you feel yourself getting hot under the collar. You don't do or say anything. Step two, you take a step back in time. Step three, you take a hard look at reality, and you compare what's happening now with what happened to you as a kid. Mm. And you That's think, not so easy to do. <laughs> I, I was criticized as a child. Am I possibly hearing criticism here where it's not intended? Step four, you check out your suspicion. You ask your partner, are you saying you don't like my chicken recipes? Right, right. You don't make and assumptions. And then he has a chance to say, no, baby, I love all your chicken parts, your breasts, your <laughs> And thighs. look at that. It would be all done just like that. <laughs> And then that one step sentence. five, you exactly. smooth ruffled feathers. You know, so you do this consciously and train yourself not to get all hot under the collar. This cools the climate down. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a third way that, to cool the climate down, and this one is the most important. Can we hold on that thought? Let's yeah, where that. am I going? Let's. All right, you're staying right there. I'm not going nowhere. All right, Dr. Jamie Turndorf, kiss your fights goodbye. Next, more of this conversation right here on Passion. You're listening to Passion with Dr. Lori Petito, the podcast. Hear the show live weeknights 10 to 11 on CJAD 800. My guest tonight, Dr. Jamie Turndorf, author of Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, discussing uh, communications and ways, unfortunately, that um, 
kind of break down communications and talking about male and females and how we handle that. And clearly, we're very different. So you're the last thing you wanted to tell us about this. Yeah. So here we go. So I talked about how we cool the climate down. Well, one of the things that really heats the climate is what I call old scars from childhood. Mm. And I'm not talking about, you know, gym injuries or war wounds. I'm talking about the emotional scars we all carry from childhood, from our deformative years, right? Right. So old <laughs> scars, right. Our deformative. <laughs> old scars always heat the relationship climate, and they fuel our fights in two ways. Now, the first way is through fight intensity. So old scars create a disproportionate reaction to present day events. This is because our brains work by association. We're always comparing present day events with earlier experiences, especially the without knowing it. Without knowing it. That's without knowing it. Right. I call this this the emotional lake effect. So if you think about the actual lake effect where a storm picks up intensity, Mm. gathering moisture as it passes over the Great Lakes, well, our brains are always dipping into the reservoir of our unconscious and making us emotionally remember similar past hurts. Dr. Love, you have a way with words. There you go, baby. We're going to talk about, I've got to take a break for news, unfortunately, right now, but uh, coming back, I also want to talk about sex. We have to get to that one. You're listening to Passion right here on CJD 800. You're listening to Passion with Dr. Lori Petito, the podcast. Hear the show live weeknights 10 to 11 on CJAD 800. Tonight on the program is Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Kiss your fights goodbye. Talking about fights and getting text messages saying they very much enjoy uh, your talking and uh, the topic here tonight. And I apologize for making you, having you be so patient. So thank you very much. Mm, so, I'd love to. We're not going to have a fight over that. <laughs> no, we are not. That's the, you know, that's commercial radio. Unfortunately, that's what we do. You got to do it. That's right. So we were talking about old scars from childhood. Yeah. Sometimes what happens when, say, uh, the partner let's say the female in this case, knows exactly that the, her husband is responding the same way that his father responded, say, or that it comes from childhood. And, but, you know, and, and it's not, they don't take responsibility necessarily for their own actions. Like I've heard people say, well, you mm-hmm. know, that's just how I was brought up. So, mm-hmm. okay, well, that's just me. Yeah, right. I got punched in the face every morning and that's just how it was. That right. doesn't mean it's okay. You know, we're talking about consciousness here because you said something very smart before we took the break. All of these associations to our childhood are happening unconsciously. Fireworks are going off inside of us over small offenses because our unconscious minds are associating a minor event in the present to all the past similar hurts. So when you have a disproportionately intense reaction to an apparently minor event, that's a clue that old scars are fueling your fire. I'll give you an example of this. Husband and wife are out to dinner, and the husband keeps checking his wristwatch, and the wife blows a gasket. Listen, if you can't wait to get out of here, let's just get the check, and let's get the hell out of here. And he looks at her flabbergasted. Why are you so furious at me? Well, her father never had any time for her. So she sees her husband checking the watch, and she assumes, she associates this with her father, and assumes he doesn't want to have time with her. But he's just checking the watch to make sure to feed the meter on time, you see? Right, all the misinterpretations that are going on Yes, and our old scars make us make these associations. We drown in intense feelings because we're reacting to all similar past hurts. So now the second thing that happens is, and this is your second clue that old scars are creating your problems, is you can't shake the feeling. And the reason we get stuck is because we aren't consciously aware that an old scar has been triggered. And so we're experiencing an emotional memory. It's disembodied from the actual memory. We don't know where our feelings are coming from. We can't wrap our brain around it and resolve it, so we're just stuck with the intense feelings we can't shake. This heats the climate, creates more fighting. So here's the thing. Would you believe that couples get caught all the time in fighting over the over issue that got the ball rolling. You know, you didn't give me foreplay. You're glued to the TV. The garbage mm-hmm. is in a heap. When they're not realizing that all those overt issues are really a smoke screen that conceal the real issue, which is the old scar that lurks beneath. And until we get to the real issue, the old scar, and work on healing that, our fights go unresolved. The climate gets hotter and hotter. So would you believe stripping is the solution? 
stripping naked? No, I'm not talking about getting naked. <laughs> We're I'm not there about, yet. <laughs> I'm talking about my stripping the overt content right. to rec- uncover the old scar. So I show you how in Kiss Your Fights Goodbye to draw a fight map. We remove the content from the equation, the who did what to whom, right. and you just chart the emotional course of the fight. Identify what you feel now, when you felt this way as a kid, what was going on when you felt this way as a kid, who was doing what to you, and then last but not least, now here's the beautiful thing. You identify your happy ending, which is what you wanted and needed from your parent that you didn't get as a kid. Mm -hmm. Now you have the opportunity to transform your partner from enemy to ally and to use your relationship for its highest and most divine purpose which is to help each other heal your old scars. And you work together to consciously discuss your old scars, explain what you needed back then, and help give each other what you needed then to each other now. And when you heal your old wounds, the fighting vaporizes. It just goes away. When you realize the triggers of your partner, too, is it's about being sensitive to your partner's triggers, but you got to know what they are, and they have but to know what is, they are. This is connected to the old scars. Right. Ah, you're triggered because, like, that here, scar. I had a couple that came to me. They hadn't had sex in 25 years because wow. they were fighting all the time. Mm-hmm. But they loved each other, but they were fighting. What was their fight about? Well, Every time she refused him sex because she had a hysterectomy, she had no drive, he saw her as the mother who never gave him love, right? Sex Mm. wasn't sex. It was love to him of the kind that he needed from his mom. The more he felt hurt and angry and scowled at her, the more she saw him as her critical mother who always scowled at her, and she didn't want to have sex with him. So they were in this vicious cycle. So as I helped them both to identify the connection to their old scars – Suddenly, something magical happened. They didn't see each other anymore as, you're my depriving mother, you're my critical mother, and they just reconnected, and they actually had sex again, and it was good sex, you know? Mm -hmm. But they had to, that's the thing, is identifying that, looking at your partner without seeing the parent that's hurting you. This is what Kiss Your Fights Goodbye shows you how to do, because, you know, it's said within the first 18 to 24 months of your relationship, you turn your partner into the parent you had difficulty with. And we do this because we want to heal. We restage it. So that's what Kiss Your Fights Goodbye shows you how to do, to be conscious of what the core wound is and then to use the relationship to help each other heal. And once we heal the old scars and we're cool, now it's so easy to go on to resolve whatever ever conflict you have and i show you how to do that step by step really you know and there's some other cool down techniques like right. we you wanted to talk about sex and i have a chapter in kiss your fights goodbye called the battle of the bulge well i want to ask <laughs> you something about sex for a minute because yeah. i you know you, we talk about the women nagging or chasing or whatever and the husband's withdrawal but in yeah. sex that doesn't happen in sex yeah you know this is the total reversal i mean I start this chapter, The Battle of the Bulge, with this joke conversation. These two men are talking, and one guy says, have you ever, ever turned your wife down for sex? Have you? And one guy, the one guy says, well, you know, once I was really, really, really sick, and, um, and I had a, a fever, and I turned her down. And the other guy said, well, you know, I had a 106-degree fever, and I didn't turn my wife down. And the other guy answered, I said sick, you know. So <laughs> even a 106-degree fever isn't sick, sick, enough, sick enough to turn your right. wife down. Because, you know, men are wired to uh, – it's a procreative imperative to get those sperm swimming upstream to continue the species. So they're very much wired to want to have sex. And even if they're fighting, they will – want to have sex, although Whereas women although, uh, often you, don't when they don't feel safe and right, secure. Right, they don't. But, right. you know, that's a bit of a generalization, too, because I have seen men yes. who withdraw sexually, oh, which we, yes, can, which we can talk about. Right, and they, they just can't. Yes, um, right. absolutely. You know, it's like all generalizations are false, of course, of course. including that one. Right. But, you We're, know, these are it's a trend. And, yes, we do see men that withdraw 
you know, and hold we'll, their little heads over her head. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about the sex war games coming up with uh, Dr. Jamie Turndorf, author of Kiss Your Fights Goodbye. You can check her out, AskDrLove.com. You're listening to Passion right here on CJD. You're listening to Passion with Dr. Lori Petito, the podcast. Hear the show live weeknights 10 to 11 on CJAD 800. Tonight on the program, Dr. Jamie Turndorf is with us. Kiss Your Fights Goodbye Love. Love talking to Dr. Love. AskDrLove.com. We have a, a lot of text messages for you, uh, Dr. Jamie, so would you like to hear them? Oh, I would. Okay, good. So one says, my wife resolves conflict with sex, and I can't resist it. Is this a good way to resolve it? <laughs> Are we asking the little man or the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll say, yeah, that's fine, but it's actually not a resolution, you know, that a lot of people use sex to make up. But I would rather see you resolve your conflicts first, and then you could have make-up sex. Ah, okay, good. Uh, another one. My man has turned me down for sex many times when upset at me, thinking I wronged him. Okay, <laughs> so it, here's an example of old scars, screaming old scars. If he feels wronged by you... It means that something you said or did has touched off an old scar. Remember, Mm. relationships are not a court of law. Feelings aren't wrong or right. If he feels offended, he's entitled to his feelings. And I show you in Kiss Your Fights Goodbye how to listen and understand his feelings. We don't need to defend and justify ourselves and say you shouldn't feel that way. If he feels that way, you listen, you understand, you ask him to cut Ask him to connect it to his history, and as you listen and understand, it'll feel like he's getting that understanding he never got from his parents, and you'll get laid. There, <laughs> there's not, I'll tell you, there's nothing more frustrating, though, um, you know, than that, than, than telling somebody how you feel and them telling you, no, you shouldn't feel that way. Oh, my but, gosh. But it you do so, feel it, that it's way. It's so how horrendous, you? and the fact is... We all need to be heard and understood. So if you can just remember one thing from what I said, do not defend and justify yourself. Listen and understand. And most conflicts are resolved through simple listening and understanding. Yes, and listening. Very, very important. Another one. Uh, Hailing Your Sexual Self was a great book. Do you know it? Actually, I know it very well. That's a very good book, so I don't know if you know it, but anyhow. Mm-mm. Okay, here's another one. Uh, withdraws emotionally, mentally, physically for days, even one to two weeks, when he fe- when he feels he's been apparently crapped on. Total, so here we go again. Yeah, well, let me finish it because it says yeah. total overreaction and then hypersensitive with lots of question marks. Acts like nothing bothers him, non-emotionally expressive except when intimate, Plays games, chew when mad, throws jabs, not getting through, totally non-productive and repetitive. Gee, if you gave him this whole laundry list of his failures, I, I would imagine he would be withdrawing a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this was a long poop list. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, one of the most amazing things is to take radical responsibility for our own role in the conflict. Instead of blaming the other person for everything that's wrong with him and what he does wrong, what if you backed up and said, what am I doing? What am I doing to offend you or drive you away? Now, that doesn't mean he doesn't have problems and he doesn't need to do work. But by blaming him, we're not breaking the cycle. And by you taking responsibility for your role, it motivates him to say, hey, if she can do it, maybe I can back up and look at myself too. Mm -hmm. So another one says, how can I get through and fix things? He won't, I don't know if it's a he or she, but it says, won't communicate. What happens if somebody is just stuck and says, you know what, I'm just not, I don't want to communicate anymore. I'm shutting down completely. Shutting down is still ANS arousal. If I hooked him up to the machines, we'd see his pulse was up, his blood pressure was up. Shut down, psychic withdrawal. And and in Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, I show you how to get around that, and it's not hard to do. There's all kinds of first aid techniques in there where you can get a guy who's as shut down as a clam to start blabbing to you. Hmm. Well, mm-hmm. got to read that book. Mm-hmm. So what about the sex war games that you talk about? Mm-hmm. So the thing is that, you know, sex war games, because obviously – the best way to hurt each other when you're in a war is to hit below the belt, ah, you know? Yeah. And 
So slamming each other sexually is the ultimate blow the belt blow, right? So women, very often the only power that women have ever had was to withdraw sex. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not saying men don't do it too, but this is a a typical, typical thing. You know, and they'll put a guy on a bread and water diet and Mm -hmm. think that this is going to... uh, give him the idea like I won't give him any or I won't give him oral sex or I won't fix myself up. But obviously, remember, whatever you do and say boomerangs back on you, revenge begets counter-revenge. Mm. Now, guys, their male sex war games uh, are most commonly not withholding sex because they do have 300 million sperm urging them to take the plunge. <laughs> so most guys, the way they punish uh, a woman is to not meet her emotional needs. Right. You know, he will not talk to her, and he won't have motivation to give her what she wants, more foreplay, better cuddling, better communication. And then they will also often seek appreciation outside the relationship, usually in the form of an affair. And if you ask a guy why he had an affair, 99% of the time it wasn't because he wasn't getting enough sex. It was because he wasn't getting enough appreciation right. from his he partner. He was feeling neglected. And that, neglected. That's also so too. now the other thing is people have to realize sex is, is often a battleground for non-sexual issues. So I have a technique in Kiss Your Fights Goodbye called How to Read Between the Sheets. Okay. Because... Very often when we're engaged in sex wars, something else is on the fritz in the relationship. And so, again, we want to go beneath the overt sexual struggle to find out what we're really fighting about. And often there's a fear of intimacy or dependency or abandonment or loss of control. Let me give you an example. This guy, Jack, he was a patient of mine. He loved his wife. But there was one problem. He wanted constant sex. Okay, so oh this is their sex fight that she was getting a crotch callus from this guy, you know, and she she just couldn't even tolerate it anymore. Right. And she backed off and he started to just have multiple affairs. So she was in this state of despair. She thought he wasn't attracted to her anymore because he was going elsewhere. She couldn't understand why he stopped approaching her. So she tried to do the approaching. She tried to introduce sexual variety. She had a makeover. Nothing worked. He right. didn't want her anymore. So. With Jack, I knew that his need for constant and varied sex had a deeper meaning. So here's when I had to do the bedroom detective work. In and less do... than 10 seconds. I'm so sorry. Baby, it's pre- I better ejaculate <laughs> prematurely. Yes. What we found out was that his his um, dad was a womanizer. And he abandoned his son when, the kid, when Jack was young. So he started philandering like dad. And his acts of inf- infidelity were just trying to fill that emptiness. There so when we go. connected all of that and his wife understood his old scar and they connected better, he didn't need to go out. And now we have to read the book to get yeah. all the rest of it. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, thank you so much. I always love being with you. Thank You're you. Great You'll have interviewer. to come back. All right. Thank you. Bye, honey. Bye. Uh, to all of you, thanks for listening. Have a great rest of the night. Uh, please remember life is short, so make sure you take the time to smell the flowers and indulge your passion. Listen to Passion with Dr. Lori Batito live weeknights 10 to 11 on CJAD and CJAD.com.